अगले तीस सेकंड्स में आप बदल सकते हैं अपने लाइफ का ट्रैक एंड नेवर लुक बैक यार छोड़ो ये सारे हैक्स एंड सिंपली लर्न टू गेट अहेड जैसे कि दानिश सिविल इंजीनियर टर्न डेटा साइंटिस्ट हु डिसाइडेड टू सिंपली लर्न और कैसे हुआ ये पॉसिबल विद अ कोर्स फ्रॉम अ प्रीमियर यूनिवर्सिटी मेरे करियर ने लिया एक नया डायरेक्शन ट्रू चैंपियन हु अपस्किल्ड टू विन बिग हाउ बिग अ मैसिव हाइक दैट ट्रांसफॉर्म माय लाइफ दानिश चेंज गेयर्स प्रीटी अर्ली इन द रेस बट Prasen wanted to explore more to get ahead. Isiliye usne kara simply learn from mechanical engineering to a data analyst and a podcaster in his free time. Aisa career transformation kaise bro? Simply learn ke industry expert se sikha live aur khud ban gaya data expert. Itna kuch itni jaldi difficult to raha hoga. With a well structured course it felt like a piece of cake. That is simply awesome. What's also awesome is that 9 saal ke long career ke baad Nitin didn't choose a quick fix. He just added data science into the mix. Nitin, how did you change the game? Worked on real industry problems to become the real deal. A joint family, a regular job, responsibilities to bahut thi, but nothing could stop Nitin from getting ahead. What an all-rounder. Day ho ya night, with flexible learning, you can always make it right. Passion ya situation chahe jo bhi ho. Nitin, Danish aur Prasen ki tarah you too will find your way to get ahead when you simply learn. Kyunki aapke liye shortcuts nahi, simply learn hai sahi. Get ahead with simply learn. Recording in progress.
Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the program preview of uh, Advanced AI Program in Business Decision Making by Wharton. Uh, and uh, we'll be starting the session in a few minutes. Meanwhile, I can see a lot of introductions coming in on chat here. So I am Rasha Khan. I'm your host for today's webinar. And I'm joining all the way from Bangalore, India. And I'm thrilled to be your host today. Uh, drop us a hello and let us know where are you tuning in from. And let the global conversations begin. I can see a lot of introductions coming in on chat here. And I can see folks have joined from Poland, Ghana. And uh, I can see Netherlands, Sri Lanka. I can see Lakshman has joined from Andhra Pradesh. I can see Hector has joined from Las Vegas. So welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. This is a global webinar. And before we start, please do let us know on chat here, introduction, your name, and where are you joining us from? It's good to network, right? These events, right? It's good to network with folks on the chat here. So, uh, and also we would love to know your thoughts even during the session as well. If you have any insights, if you have any questions, you can let us know in the q and box. So just a quick tip before we start. And uh, meanwhile, I can see a lot of introductions coming in on chat, chat here, that's great. Awesome, we'll be starting the session. In a few, uh, few minutes, meanwhile, uh, let's go to the ground rules here. So uh, we have very simple ground rules here. So if you have any question for the, our speaker who are already here with us, Eric, you can put down that question in the Q&A box. Uh, as you can see that we get a lot of messages on chat here. It will be hard for us to track your question here, and we would love to answer all of your queries here. Uh, so please go and put down your question in the Q&A box. If you have any questions related to the program in general, related to the career in general in AI, so, uh, and also, uh, there will be special duration for the Q&A part, so you don't have to worry. Your questions will be answered in that uh, basically particular duration in case we're not able to take up uh, during the session. And uh, the session has been recorded, so in case you want to go through the recording of the session again, you can expect a follow-up email with recording link and also the bonus offer for attending the session for the program which we have. We'll be talking about that pretty soon. Also, to request a proof of attendance for this webinar, you can provide your name in the post-webinar survey, which we'll be getting uh, after the session. Uh, and in order to get the webinar certificate, you need to basically stay till the end of the session. So thank you so much once again. I can see the introductions are still coming in. And uh, we will be basically starting the session in a few minutes. Meanwhile, uh, before we start, let's get to know each other a little better. So uh, before we start, we would love to know that how many years of experience do you currently have? So you can see four quick options in the poll here. This is a single choice question. You can select one option, which is the most suitable for you. So I'll just read out those options for you here. So the first one is you, if you have less than two years of experience, you can uh, basically take uh, that option. And if you have uh, two to five years of experience, you can select the second option. If you have uh, five to nine years of experience, you can select the third one. And also, if you have uh, more than 10 years of experience, you can select the fourth one. And as I'm speaking, I can already see that folks have already started sharing their experiences on the poll here. So we will be starting the session in a few minutes. Meanwhile, we have a quick poll for you on your screen. So we would love to know how many years of experience do you currently have? Awesome. As I was speaking, we basically were getting a lot of messages in the Q&A box already. Okay, okay. Uh, awesome, awesome. Uh, okay, I can see folks are replying on chat here as well. So in case this particular poll does not cover your experience, you can let us know on chat here as well. So that's not an issue, but uh, if you actually is, uh, if you can see the most suitable option for you here, you can also select in the poll as well. So I'll be closing the poll in five seconds because I can see most of the folks have already shared the responses in the poll here. That's great. We've gotten a really, really uh, active audience here. So I'll just close the poll in five seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. Let me quickly end the poll and also share the results with you. So as we can see that, uh, 40% of the folks who have joined us here have less than two years of experience. And also equally, 40% of the folks who have joined us here have more than any years of experience. So we have gotten... ...to 10 years. And uh, as we can see that we have gotten a few of the votes for two to five years and also five to 10 years as well. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. And uh, I can still see the introductions coming in. So that's great. Keep it coming. 
and uh, meanwhile we move on we'll talk about the agenda of the session so uh, uh, we will be getting to know a little bit more about you how we can help you out better and uh, for that you can basically let us know if you have any queries uh, we already have a speaker here with us who will address all of your queries you know as much as possible we'll be talking about ai in business and we'll be talking about what this program offers you and we're talking about how this program gets you future ready and also taking you through the enrollment steps and as i have mentioned earlier that there'll be a special duration for the q a part so please don't worry about it in case your questions are not answered we'll be taking those towards the end so please do put any questions in the Q&A box. And also keep it relevant to the program and uh, the basically topic of the session. So that's that's just a small request, so that's all. So moving on, we already have a speaker here with us, Eric Hamburger. Eric, uh, first of all, welcome. Welcome to the session. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time out, you know, for taking us to the program preview. Uh, so would you like to give us your introduction to the crowd here? Sure, thank you, Rasha. Uh, and thanks to all of you out there for joining us today. Uh, I'm sure looking at the incredible global representation that we've had, and I see in the chat that it is a variety of times for a variety of us. Right now um, in Southern New Jersey, where I am, it is 11.38 a.m. And yesterday and tomorrow, I will be on Wharton's campus as I am most days of the week. Uh, but today you catch me at home. Also, I'm looking at this headshot of myself and realizing that uh, for the global audience, you may not care, but uh, in a few days time, it is the uh, Halloween holiday in the United States where folks dress up in costumes and I am trying to get uh, quite ready for my costume, which requires a beard that is not particularly full, and I will shave it this weekend. So a little bit of grace from our audience. I appreciate it sincerely. Um, okay. I, one, am really impressed by the representation that we have across the globe here joining today. And it's a, re a real reminder about the global cohorts that come to this program. And also I think an indication for all of you, the types of folks and the diversity of experience that you'll get to interact with. And for any of you that have spoken on an engagement, you know, usually talking about yourself may be the less favorite part of the program. But as Rasha said, my name is Eric Hamburger and I am the managing director of Wharton Online. And uh, I help facilitate this partnership with Simply Learn which quite frankly allows us to take uh, our incredible faculty and thought leadership in spaces like machine learning or artificial intelligence to a more global audience. And I think we've already seen the evidence of that here today with this audience profile. Now, uh, prior to taking over Wharton Online, I was the founding managing director of a business called Wharton Live. And there we were tasked with building and we continue to build dynamic synchronous virtual programs both for small, intimate learning audiences and also for massive cohorts. At the turn of the calendar year, the school made a strategic decision to merge that team with the larger Wharton Online team, sort of uniting all of our capabilities to do online education, which is to say we've been doing it for a long time. Um, and humbly, I would say we're, we're getting pretty good at it. Now, prior to these roles, uh, I was the assistant dean of graduate business at a nearby school here in the Northeast called Villanova University. I've been an adjunct faculty in MBA programs and other graduate level courses and departments for the past 15 years, which is making me feel a little old. I've got two boys, they're eight and six, and um, it's never dull, as all of you that are juggling many things, your career, your family, all your work-life obligations, we know uh, that we are quite busy, and the fact that you are taking time out to continue your education and consider this program, I salute you, all right? Because if these things were easy, everyone would do it. Okay, I think we can move ahead as we talk about maybe a little bit more of Wharton Online down the road in this presentation. But as we start to segue into AI's role in driving the economy and sort of its role in business, I think about... Um, data driving the economy. I think I need to also preface some of these content, um, comments to share with all of you. While we have eight incredible Wharton faculty, and I should mention that for Wharton Online and executive education here at the Wharton School, we only use standing fully tenured faculty members. And that may not matter to you, um, but for the 
savvy enrollee that has looked at other programs at other institutions, other reputable institutions included, often you'll see programs like this outsourced to an adjunct or subject matter expert. Um, it is rare that you get the full research faculty of a top, arguably the top business school in the world teaching in this program. And we don't just have one of those. We have eight. Uh, I am not one of them. <laughs> I just work with those folks to make sure that they bring their thought leadership to bear, as Professor Raghu Iyengar did this past Saturday, and Professor Lynn Wu her herself will do this coming Saturday, and some of our masterclass sessions that are a part of this program. So that's also to say, while I know a great deal about artificial intelligence, uh, I am not the person that will be teaching you in this program. That said, I, I think we've been suggesting that you know, AI is such a fast moving field that organizations need to take a portfolio approach to build capacity within their organizations. So we're using data in structured forms and we're experimenting with AI to analyze the unstructured data, right? Data that grows and accumulates among our respective data houses, 80% of which, I mean, approximately speaking is unstructured. So AI enables us to mine that data in search of the gold that is essentially buried there, right? What are we going to uncover? What are we going to learn? And then how are we going to apply those learnings? These technologies allow us to do things like test hypotheses of our business and also manage uncertain environments, like the kinds of circumstances we find ourselves in today, right? Emerging from COVID, global global conflicts, as we know. Um, and also, I saw we have a learner from Morocco. We've got natural disaster that's also impacted several places. So as we think about our fellow folks that are going through tough times, AI is still going to play a role there, right? Fear of recession. There's so many other factors that largely have, sometimes we have little to no control over, and they still influence our deliberative processes when it comes to decision making. So whatever we can do to bring data to better test these hypotheses and the decision making options that sit before us, the better we will be and the more successful our business will be as a result. So, you know, there's outfits like there like McKinsey and TCS that have created analyses that call for people that stand between business models that have been developed and leveraged by the administrative leaders say in or around the C-suite of a particular organization and the data scientists. So this course in particular is something that is not intended to be, say, engineering in focus. Instead, it's providing business cases across multiple fields and industries. Okay, Think broadly about general management, which in one respect, I would say, is, is why this program has such blanket appeal, at least in my opinion, that through the exploration of both structured and unstructured data, you can literally translate that through the, the information that's coming out of your data warehouses into a forecast or a decision-making model that helps inform the decision-making process across really multiple levels of management, right? The management ecosystem that's inside your organization. So really, if, if you think about where we are today, in contrast to where you will be at the completion of this program, Picture yourself as understanding enough about AI and machine learning technologies that are currently maturing rapidly before our eyes, right? And apply that understanding in advising senior leadership at your organization, which might actually be yourself, okay? To start to form questions that this data can then answer. It's really that sort of mid to senior level role that will analyze cases, all right? We're going to analyze cases in this program that cover companies at really the leading edge of extracting critical information from the loose data that's available, all right? To them, really amongst vast repositories of what we said before, right, unstructured data. And I should say that in that pool, this pool of unstructured data, we're talking about a number of different things, right? Email, voicemail, video, audio, web traffic data, so many other things in, that inform customer profiles that reveal how they move from sort of exploration as a customer to ultimately purchasing a product. All of these data sources are frankly different than when I was a young consumer, say 20 years ago, when we only had things like tabular data. Think relational databases and spreadsheets that were organized by rows and columns and they were applied in more direct ways, right? To predict and drive forecasting models that were frankly, rooted in a world 
of far more uncertainty. And looking at the professional experience that Rosh has solicited before at the start of the session, I know a lot of you are probably in the same boat with remembering those early days, right? So back then we did things like what? We did scenario planning, we did sensitivity analyses, but now we're talking about it in part in this program, optimization models, right? That emerge with clear choices and hopefully expected forecasts that we can bank on. So in those old days of rela relational database management systems and the various forms of structured data, I, you know, not to date myself and some of our global learners might not care, this isn't your father's Oldsmobile anymore, right? This is a new day where we're all going to know employers and top level leaders have an expectation. I mean, dare I say demand really, right? That top people understand these technologies and are able to leverage their full capabilities, Okay. So these new tools are allowing us to mine this unstructured data in productive ways. And I think that's another fundamental cornerstone of this course, of this program. So I think that really talks to uh, the next slide too, Rasha, about how it's impacting every aspect of business. You know, this course is gonna show you a bunch of examples that come from organizations that have ex successfully applied artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies to develop new say sales and marketing strategies is one example we'll be looking at the work that's been done by modern marketing firms to develop personalized recommendation engines and explore other marketing strategies that are informed by large transactional and analytical databases that are therefore informed by large pools of customer behavior that augment our data pools you'll be looking at large financial applications like midstream identification of patterns of customer behavior. And that suggests fraudulent activity, perhaps, for companies that are processing things like e-commerce uh, transactions. I know that's been uh, a situation that we've dealt with in the past. This enables, I really think, that the potential for intervention, right? You can actually do something about it. To take steps to assure the security of something like transactional security for transactions that might initially appear suspicious. We can call on our incredible faculty associated with Wharton's People Analytics Initiative. Their conference was back in person a couple months ago, right here in downtown Philadelphia. Uh, and it examined how artificial intelligence and machine learning can be used to successfully navigate the tasks uh, that inform our decision-making, say on things like hiring, your decisions on promotion, your decisions on performance management. AI can play a strong role here, but let's remember there are also ethical considerations when it comes to the management of people. And that critical aspect's not overlooked here. And it's one I hope that we all take very seriously. We've got our particular professor right now in this program, Kevin Warbach, that's developing a program in AI ethics right now. And he's also one of the people that does master classes in this program, right? There's a lot of different threads we can pull given the thought leadership from the Wharton School that's part of this program. Uh, I know one particular case we've looked at is Zest Money, a FinTech firm. Um, that's been a part of this before. We've got, you know, G20 countries, even here in the United States, people that lack FICO scores, they can't qualify for loans and things like that exacerbate the division between the people that have and the people that don't, okay? That can perpetuate itself generationally. And I don't think that's just unique to the United States. Could we not apply new FinTech technologies that really better underwrite the eligibility of the people who are indeed credit worthy, but maybe aren't seen so through the eyes of outdated legacy systems and applications. Um, it's a really interesting thing that can help maybe more democratize financial institutions and people who have access to capital. So, okay, I think we could skip ahead one. Let me talk about well-rounded understanding real quick. We'll be getting the questions in a moment. So. Um, Preparing yourself, preparing yourself for really what is, dare I say new, I still think it's new because it's dynamic, it's ever changing, but this new decision-making arena, this program helps people like yourself gain the kind of tactile experience, exposure to the terminology, the nomenclature, so to speak, that the engineers and the data scientists use in building and developing artificial intelligence and machine learning projects in perhaps the company you work for 
or the company in which you aspire to work for in the future. It also, these this program and this curriculum is going to enable you to level set with an understanding of these things, these technologies, okay? What constitutes big data? What constitutes artificial intelligence? What is machine learning? How is it conceived relative to company size? What does it mean for a small firm and how they might pursue outsourced solutions on the open market? What about a big firm and their application development group? Coming out of the program, you should understand the fundamental differences between supervised and unsupervised deep learning. You're going to explore cases that touch on those types and the deep learning, the kind of algorithmic based processes are put in play by development organizations, for example. So if we if we actually swing back to people management and legitimate ethical concerns over, say, HR applications, there are a really myriad of corporate organizational risks that can be associated with artificial intelligence. You've either seen them firsthand in your place of business or with a competitor, or you've certainly read about it in the news. Algorithms have the unfortunate potential of being just as biased as we can be as individuals when it comes to things like hiring, things like promotion, performance assessment. This program is going to compel you to take a step back and to realize, you know, there's ways in which AI applications can implement and spread bias in an undetected way, or it can be in some circumstances less than transparent in processes that utilize various data points to inform an algorithm to make a particular recommendation. It's supposed to inform the decisions we make, right? These are, in my estimation, critically important issues for general management. And this is perhaps even more critical for those working in the nonprofit and the government sectors. I'm sure there's a few of you out there today, okay? All right, I think we can push ahead one more as we keep working our way through some regular remark. I think this is an important question. Yes. Um, you know, have you been looking? Yeah, Raja, take this one for us. Sure. Uh, so uh, basically, we have talked about, you know, the how AI is involving in business today. So uh, what's stopping you from gaining the AI expertise? You can see four quick options on your screen here. Uh, this is a multiple choice question. So you can select multiple options here. Uh, so what is the biggest challenge here when it comes to gaining AI expertise? So I'll just read out those options for you. Uh, the first one is I can't find a program with a fully comprehensive curriculum. Second one, I don't have the practical exposure I need to become job ready. Third one, I find it difficult to learn from pre-recorded videos. And the fourth one, my work schedule won't allow me enough time for learning. So while I was speaking, you can see folks have already started sharing the response of the poll here. That's great. We have gotten a really active audience here, active set of aspiring learners here as well. So uh, I'll give 10 seconds more for the poll here. Uh, meanwhile, uh, I can see there are many interesting questions coming in the Q&A part of the session. And we'll be taking those pretty soon in some time. Meanwhile, keep the questions coming in if you've already voted for the poll here. So I'll give 10 seconds more for the poll here. Okay, I can see most of the folks have already shared the responses for the poll here. So I'll just, just give five seconds more. So five, four, three, two, one. I'll be ending the poll now and also sharing what is the biggest concern here. Let's see what have our folks share with us over this poll. So as we can see, the biggest concern here is we've gotten 50% of the votes for I wouldn't get the practical exposure I need to become job ready. And 45% uh, of the folks have also shared that I can't find a program with a fully comprehensive curriculum. And 35% uh, of the folks have shared that my work schedule won't allow me enough time for learning. And few of the folks have also voted for, I find it difficult to learn from pre-recorded videos. So thank you so much sharing that with us. Uh, meanwhile, let's move, move on to the program preview here. So the Wharton's online program preview. 
uh, for AI for decision, decision making, business strategies, and application comes with a comprehensive curriculum with an industry online learning path. And also, uh, it gives you online live discussion supplements, self paced learning. Uh, it gives you access to integrated assignments, quizzes for practical learning. And also, this program will be flexible to fit your lifestyle and schedule in case you are a working professional, which we saw a lot of them in, you know, when we took the experience board. Uh, the program duration for this one is three months, and you can just complete it by giving three to five hours per week. Um, Eric just had a question about the program here. So in the live uh, learning environment, how does the peer and instructor in in interaction looks like? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, and, and, you know, if, if it's striking me now, Rasha, if we want to go ahead um, a couple slides, we could also highlight some of the faculty um, and then pivot back to this if it's applicable. Sure, the, sure. So, uh, one, I want to thank everybody out there for answering that most recent poll. Um, you know, there's challenges here when you're talking about a program that's covering subject matter that changes every day. <laughs> Right. I mean, we read about in the news cycle last week, you know, the potential acquisition of open AI for $80 billion. Um, these things are changing constantly, which is exciting. And I think it's why it's critically important that you consider a program that has live sessions. And even better, if those live sessions are going to be hosted by folks like those you see before you. Uh, part of, um, I mean, to answer Rasha's question and, and really a question from our audience is the, the faculty deliver a master class for roughly two hours in length. And we try to host these one time per month and we rotate these faculty in on a particular cadence. Now, the interesting thing is we actually have back-to-back uh, -back weekly sessions this particular week, which is nice. When we have the opportunity to offer more, we absolutely do that. So you can bank on one per month, but it's a possibility that you'll get more than that. So you see Professor Lin Wu, she's going to be teaching this Saturday. Um, you know, it's, I, I always appreciate when she, she can start talking about deep fakes. She can show you some examples of which she won't be able to tell. She's going to apply her research. Professor Raghu Iyengar at the bottom right there taught this past Saturday. He is a marketing expert, uh, and he can start to shed light on some of the verticals covering marketing and artificial intelligence that Rasha just kind of skipped over that we'll return to in just a moment. Um, but you get the chance to not just hear from these faculty for two hours, but you get to engage with them. You can enter questions into a chat. You can try to speak via microphone. So I, I, I think that that sort of access to the thought leadership of Wharton faculty that are experts. They are the experts that are writing the books and giving the interviews and informing the research and the business decisions that are impacted by artificial intelligence are right here in this program. Now, a quick aside for me. Uh, I have uh, some of our team right now down in Orlando, Florida for a huge HR conference. Um, we're talking like 4,000 attendees, and these are CHRO level leaders, the heads of leadership, um, talent development, L&D at their particular corporations, Fortune 500s. And we brought Professor Matthew Bidwell down to give a speaking engagement. He's down there next to Prof Professor Iyengar here on the screen, a management professor. Professor Bidwell um, was speaking in a theater session for which uh, we had 100 seats. And it felt like um, <laughs> we were with a movie star or a rock star because uh, rather than 100, we had, I, I think, over 600 people trying to attend, 1,000 that had registered because they are hungry for this sort of Wharton thought leadership in subjects like artificial intelligence and human resources. So that was really exciting for us. I think he was a little bit overwhelmed about the interest in his program. Uh, but it's just sort of an indicator that while all of those folks at a conference in Orlando, Florida yesterday were sort of like pushing and shoving, trying to get their way to this sort of information, you're going to get it from the comfort of your home at some point in this program. Okay, so you can relax. You don't have to fight with anybody to get a seat. You're going to be there and you're going to get a chance to interact directly. And I think that's pretty, uh, I think that's a lot of fun. Okay, so that was a little bit about the interaction for that question, Rasha. We can come back to this one too to talk about faculty a little bit more later. So let me just uh, quickly go back to the slide here. 
Uh, so I, at the end of it all, you get the Wharton online certification, which you can see here on the screen uh, for the AI for decision making business strategies and applications program. And also you get to work on real world business case studies, which we'll be talking about in the upcoming slides here. And also the live online masterclasses on Wharton, which Eric has already mentioned. Uh, and also a curriculum co-created by eight distinguished Wharton professors, which we have already talked about. Uh, also, let's talk about the Wharton advantage here. So Eric, can you tell us a little bit about this? Sure, and just quickly scanning chat real time, Rasha, Cedric, to your, your question, yes. And I, I think ChatGPT is about to release Plat 4.0 um, on ChatGPT4. Uh, really right about like next week. Um, some of our professors have already gotten early access to that platform to figure out how to leverage it for its new advantages. Um, Dennis, your question about having an AI degree, unnecessary. And I think this is probably a question that applies to a lot of folks out there. I don't want anybody to feel intimidated if you don't have a quant background or particularly strong in coding and math. That's frankly not what this program's about. This program is about level setting and understanding of artificial intelligence and machine learning as it impacts business across various sectors and verticals. Okay, so you could consider yourself managing a team that might have that sort of expertise on board, but you need to understand it more deeply so you can speak the language, one, and two, lead that team to start to answer the sort of strategic questions that are challenging your business. So I don't want anybody to be deterred if you think, you know, well, I'm not a coder or I don't have an AI degree, okay? I wouldn't be too worried about that. Now to Rasha's last question about the competitive advantage of the Wharton School. Oh boy, um, I, we're the world's first business school. First to do it. I humbly would say, I, I think we're the best. Uh, we have more faculty, um, than any other business school in the world. At last count, I think we're over 220. These folks are, are experts in the field. I think I sort of alluded to it a second ago. They write the book, not a book, uh, that lead research in the industry, their particular areas of expertise. This includes the eight people that have content in this program and also teach live. Uh, you see sort of the, the volume of programs. In addition, Wharton Online specifically in our team oversees 120 unique programs. But I think it's important for all that scale, we reach one to two million people annually. That may not matter to you. I think what's important is we have one program with Simply Learn and you yourself are an individual, right? I think that's what's important today. What is this program going to provide to you as a singular individual, no matter where you're located? Um, and that's one of the reasons we partnered with Simply Learn is to get to a global cohort that is diverse in audience and professional experience and can bring all of you together in a singular learning environment. I think that's what's important to me. It's what's exciting about a partnership like this and a program like this. Uh, so while we've certainly got global reach and a global reputation, I think about this more at sort of a granular level for all of us today. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Eric. Uh, moving on to the eligibility and prerequisites here. So I think we are getting a few questions about the prerequisites and eligibility here. So, uh, so here you don't have to have any prior knowledge or experience in programming and math. And uh, this is ideal for C-suit executives, senior level managers and consultants. So uh, about the eligibility part here. Uh, so uh, this program does not require any knowledge or experience in programming or mathematics, right? Uh, so folks who are coming from uh, a non-programming or non-mathematics non background, uh, have you seen those students succeed, Eric, uh, when they have taken up this course? Yeah, and, and Rasha, quite plainly for, for that question, it's actually the majority of learners that enroll in this program fit that profile. So oh, don't feel like you're you're the minority. I think you're actually going to find yourself in, in, in good company. <laughs> it can be intimidating. We all know, right? We can all think back to uh, primary school and our challenges with mathematics. For some of us, it comes easily. For others, it's much harder. Um, but I, I think you're you're going to be just fine. I think think about it in terms more of business application. Thank you so much for answering that. Also, the ideal candidates for this program, as I mentioned, uh, you can be a CSUT executive, you can be a senior executive, business leaders and managers and managers and leaders, you know, who basically are seeking to build their own capabilities in strategies, leadership and innovation. 
So how this program prepares you, we'll be talking about more about that in the upcoming uh, slides here. So uh, as you can see how, how the program builds your uh, skills uh, step by step. So uh, uh, can you take us through, through these foundations here of the program, basically how, how it builds your skills step by step through what in this program? Sure. I, I think this this is really kind of a, a visual representation of what we've been saying um, throughout the, the presentation is that, you know, we've got a diverse set of faculty that come from a variety of academic departments here at the Wharton School, which shows the intentionality for which this program has been built. And also the fact that none of these say, right, you're going to be covering Python in week three or right, you're going to be learning R in week five. Uh, this is about how all of these things touch and you get foundations of platforms at the end. Um, but we're going through with Professor Bidwell and Professor Peter Capelli about human resource management. Um, we've got finance faculty and from people like Professor Michael Roberts, uh, economics and government. Like we, we've already taken a look at marketing and Professor Iyengar. Professor Kevin Warbach, who oversees another academic department here. So you're getting department chairs on top of this. These, these are really, I mean, for lack of a better phrase, some heavy hitters in the academic world. And they consult with companies uh, quite often because companies and senior executives, some of which may be joining us today, look to their thought leadership to help guide the strategy of their business. Uh, thank you so much for taking us through the steps and telling us a little bit more about that. About the electives part here, as we mentioned it earlier, as well, the master classes with Wharton, uh, they are optional and they come as a part of the program, so you don't have to pay anything extra for that. Uh, now, moving on, uh, I think we have already covered the world-respected program faculty, which we have here, who basically makes sure that Simply Learn is delivering to Wharton standards. And uh, let's move on to the real-world example projects you get to work on in this uh, particular program. So, uh, Eric, as we can see that there are so many projects, you know, folks can take up and basically add up to their portfolio, specifically if they're, as you told us, that, you know, they're coming from a non-programming, non-mathematic background, and uh, basically these projects, basically, how do they help, uh, you know, when they are trying to get out there, you know, get a job and uh, when they're preparing for these interviews, how do these projects help in adding those uh, port basically projects to their portfolio? So can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, and actually, if you if you don't mind just backing up one, um, I think it, it's worth noting Professors uh, Karthay Hasenager and, and Sonny Tambay actually run uh, Wharton's AI Center. Um, so I, I think just another indicator of the folks that we have teaching in the program. Okay, sorry, Rasha, there was one more plug for our faculty. As you can see, um, I sincerely appreciate their involvement here. Now, to these companies and organizations, I think what you're going to find is someone that's maybe aspirationally targeting career advancement. You're thinking about uh, moving up maybe within your own organization or pivoting to something new. Uh, and we can go back to those cases, Rasha, if you want. I think it's one, one back. Uh, you're going to have tangible examples and information that you can speak to, okay? Um, where you can call out cases, you can call out examples, like you have studied these things, you are knowledgeable about these things. It's not some sort of abstract notion, right, that you read in an article, you actually looked at application and the subsequent impact of that application. And I think those sort of opportunities start to feel real, right? We start to actually flex and exercise a muscle that is going to grow stronger. The more we do this, the better we get at it. And that's, I think, one of the deliberate reasons why we laid out so many of these in the program is that you get to start to flex and strengthen that muscle. And ultimately, you'll be better served for it as you move into whatever's next. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you so much for answering that. Uh, so we have talked about the, you know, AI's role in business and decision making. And we have talked about uh, basically the projects you can add to your portfolio through this program. And we have talked about the what an advantage here you know, taking up this program, how does Wharton add to your portfolio here and uh, basically makes it really amazing like, you know, how to have like Wharton online on your uh, basically portfolio when you're getting out there and trying to transition your career towards AI in business decision making. So uh, you can see a quick poll on your screen here. So uh, are you interested in enrolling for the AI for decision making program with Wharton online? 
Uh, and for this particular program, uh, for attending this webinar as well, we have a bonus offer for you folks. Uh, so you can avail that bonus offer uh, by enrolling into the program today. So you can just quickly select yes as an option here. You can see two big options here, yes and no. So you can share your interest towards enrollment through this poll here. So as I was speaking, I can see a lot of interest, interest towards enrollment coming in. So that's great. I can see a lot of folks basically who are aspiring to be a part of the program. And uh, we might see a lot of you folks in the upcoming cohort. So that's great. So I'll just give like 15 seconds more for, for the folks who are still basically thinking about it and uh, basically sharing the response on the poll here. Meanwhile, uh, we have gotten a lot of interesting questions in the Q&A box and we'll be taking those pretty soon. So if you have any questions about the program, or the career in general in AI for decision making, you can let us know in the Q&A box. And uh, meanwhile, uh, maybe like Eric can browse through the Q&A box here because we've gotten a plenty of questions and we'll take, try to take as many as possible in the, in the next uh, you know few minutes of the time we have. And, and I saw a question from Hal uh, about the certificate branding. Uh, we had taken a quick peek at that a few slides back. It does include, it's the Wharton brand that you'll see on that certificate. Um, okay, some of the... I'll just show the certificates once, as you can see in the screen. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, so some of these, yep, yeah, and hopefully I'm, I'm just kind of catching up. Uh, Brooke, about the content in the course, we had sort of that tiered approach where you see it sort of cross over multiple disciplines uh, in verticals when it comes to finance, HR, um, global management. And you think about a, a series of pre-recorded videos, readings, applications of what you learn, and ultimately the opportunity to sort of like distill that down and apply it through the cases that we just mentioned, in addition to some of the uh, master classes that you'll get access to at least once a month. And that in in a lot of cases, I think is is a it's a key aspect to the program because you consider that that professor is walking in to the virtual classroom on a particular day with all of you able to talk about the news of the day, what has just happened, what has just emerged in a really dynamic and fluid way, uh, in addition to just talking about their active research and consulting work. And I think that is a real good opportunity to start to take the core sort of evergreen fundamental learnings of the program when a learning management system and start to think kind of more broadly about how that's impacting um, the events of right now. And let's start. Any prerequisites for the program? Not to my knowledge. Uh, some of these uh, questions are sector specific for the businesses in which people work. I would just offer, with all due respect to the things that I can offer to all of you in the audience today, I would not be the right resource to start to talk about the specifics of how AI impacts your particular business or organization. I'm sure our faculty would be much better suited. Um, and hopefully the curriculum itself can help you find those applications too individually. So, okay, I think I covered some of that. Um, Brooke, there's no necessarily formal office hours that uh, with the faculty themselves, but there are sessions sort of facilitated early on with an induction ceremony. We bring also more uh, thought leadership to bear outside of Wharton faculty in a kickoff session that starts with every cohort. Again, another good opportunity to ask questions and sort of apply learnings. This particular uh, session, I think, will wrap up whenever the Q&A is finished. Uh, let's see, the class timings and the duration, they are, and actually it's a good question because we were talking about this with the Simply Learn team just this past week. Traditionally, we've done these on Saturdays in the morning for the East Coast of the United States, say 10 a.m. So IST time before daylight savings puts us at 7.30 p.m. We sort of did that intentionally to try to get all of Europe, all of Africa, all the way to uh, our neighbors in Pakistan and India that I know are joining us today, inclusive of the early morning on the West Coast of the United States. But we've also started to entertain having some of those on weeknights uh, here in the East Coast, which would be, say, early morning or mid-morning for parts of Europe, Africa, and uh, Western Asia. So the classes themselves, the master classes, span typically at least 90 minutes, if not two hours in length. Uh, and depending on the robustness of the conversation and the questions, you know, that can go on for at least two hours, if not longer. And let's see, 
Uh, also, Eric, uh, I think uh, folks have sh a lot of them have sh already shared their interests towards the enrollment of the program. So that's great. We have brought in a lot of aspiring uh, folks here who are going to join the program. Uh, meanwhile, I can see uh, most of you have already shared their responses on the poll here. So I'll just give five seconds more. So quickly, folks, uh, just go and share your responses on the poll here. Would you like to enroll into the uh, program for EEI for decision making with what and online? You can see a quick poll on your screen here. So I'll just give like 10 seconds more so for you to basically share your responses here and also just to remind you there's a bonus offer for attending this webinar here so in case you want to avail it i'll be asking the, those questions next basically when do you plan to start so and about the fee and the schedule we'll be sharing that next so i think i'll just uh, quickly end the poll here because i think most of the folks have already shared their interest so five four three two one let me quickly end the poll and thank you so much uh, for sharing your responses on the poll here so moving on let me take you through the enrollment steps here there are three easy steps you need to follow to enroll here uh, so you need to submit an application you can apply at ask us at simplyon.net i'll be sharing that email id after i'm done uh, with the slide uh, after that your application will be going for review and based on the application review you'll be getting admissions offer letter call from learning consultants from simply learn and uh, you basically can also, you know, go through much more detail with them in case you have any questions about the program. And moving on to the program fee and the schedule part. Uh, so uh, the upcoming cohort for this one is 8th of November. And uh, the program fee for U.S. candidates here is three. Okay, are folks still with me? Because I lost audio and video too. All right, let me know in the chat if you get. Okay, great, Omkar, thank you. I think Rosh is coming back on. And she was going through some of the mechanics. She was just mentioning that the next cohort starts November eighth. I think the program retails for three thousand U.S. dollars, um, but I know the Simply Learn team will be guiding folks through potential um, tuition benefits that have been made available for attendance. And I think that starts to Rasha, how are we doing? Uh, awesome. Sorry, sorry for the technical issue from my no end. problem. I thought I had <laughs> I had a I had the electric company on my street earlier and I was getting <laughs> nervous it was me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. So as we were talking about the fee part here, so for Indian candidates, we have the fee of 1,35,000 uh, INR, including taxes. And we also have financing options available for as low as 4,594 rupees uh, per month. Uh, for uh, more assistance, you can always reach out to us at askus at simplyone.net. I'll share the, that email ID here. Yeah, you know, I'll just uh, quickly share those uh, details here, even about the program page link. In case, uh, I, as I saw that you, a lot of your folks are joining from different different parts of the world. So if you want to check out the program uh, fee and the schedule for your own uh, basically region, you can go, uh, check out this link I've shared about for the program on the chat here. Sorry. Quickly share the program link here on the chat. You can check it out. Uh, for your own agent here. And uh, again, like, so sorry for the technical issues we had earlier. So again, like, no uh, so uh, I'll just uh, quickly launch a poll on basically for the folks who have already shared their interest towards enrollment into the Wharton's AI program. Uh, how soon do you plan to enroll in the Wharton's AI program? You can see four quick options here. Again, just to remind you for the folks who have already shared interest, which I saw most of you who basically are interested in enrolling to the program. Uh, these are four quick options here. In case basically you are still thinking about it, I would suggest that uh, you can take up the within three months or within six months or more than six months from now option because the bonus offer you'll be getting to uh, attending this webinar, you can avail that even from more than six months from now. So uh, I would suggest like take up any of those options which is most suitable for you. I'll keep up this poll alive for 10 seconds more because I can see folks have already started sharing the responses while I was speaking. So you folks are pretty quick. Um, so, so, okay. And meanwhile, I think we have answered a lot of those questions uh, in the Q&A box here. 
So, uh, Okay, okay, okay. I can I think I'll give five seconds more for the poll here. Hmm. Uh, folks who are responding on chat here, you can let us know on the poll here. That will help us understand because we miss a lot of messages we get on chat here. So I hope you understand. Okay, I think most of the folks have already shared uh, their responses for the when do they plan to enroll. So I'll just quickly end this poll in five seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. Let me quickly end the poll. And once again, like thank you so much for sharing that with us. So uh, Eric, I think uh, coming to the Q&A part, I think we have taken a lot of questions, right? You have answered a lot of these questions during the session itself. Uh, maybe let's browse through and see if we have any uh, relevant question, you know, towards the program or AI in general. Yeah, I think there's just a, a couple of repeat questions I see still coming in. Um, and apologies if anybody thought this program or this particular session today would be geared more towards uh, love lessons themselves. Those are found actually within the program. So apologies for any confusion if that happened. Um, the certificate, uh, I think they're asking, some of those are about this particular session, right? And applying that certificate, Rasha, that sounds, I, I think, right. If you don't mind just clarifying that for folks again. Sure, sure. Yes, you'll be getting a certificate for attending this webinar and you'll be receiving that post webinar email, you know, with the recording link of the session. So you can expect that. For that, you need to basically uh, stay till the end of the session. We basically are towards the end of the session. Uh, so uh, before, yeah, before that, uh, I would love to know that for folks who have already shared their interest towards enrollment into the program and also have let us know basically when do you plan to enroll. So just a quick poll to understand if you need any assistance in enrolling into the AI for decision-making, uh, you know, a program with what and online. So if there are two quick options there, yes and no. Uh, please do let us know. And uh, okay. As we scroll through the chat here and the q and I'm just, just checking out if we have anything here. Uh, okay, uh, I think Brooke has asked what is the length of the course, so it is of uh, three months duration. You can just complete it by giving like three to four hours per week. So I hope that answers your question. Any more questions about the program in general? Okay, I think uh, we have gotten one question, Eric. I don't know if you have taken this up. I think this is pretty recent. I'll just put this down on the chat for you because we have gotten a lot of questions here. <laughs> so, so this is, I've just put down this question on the chat. Is this program suitable to a person currently working as a machine learning engineer and doing software engineering work? I think it is if you are looking to learn more about the impacts to business and business strategy. If you're looking to take a deeper dive into engineering and software engineering work, I would say probably not. Uh, mm -hmm. Also to the the question about the Amazon box behind me, I believe that's part of my Halloween costume. Fingers crossed mm -hmm. that it fits. Thank you for that question. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, I think I can see most of the folks have already shared the responses for the poll here. So I'll quickly end the poll now. And uh, we basically are towards the end of the session. So uh, first of all, I uh, would love to thank Eric for taking the time out and taking us through the program preview for Warren's online uh, course for AI. Uh, Eric, would, like, would you like to say something to the folks here before we end the session? Sure, I'd like to say thank you to, to you, Rasha, for hosting us today um, and for keeping us moving. I also, you know, as I said at the beginning of the session, I really appreciate everybody uh, taking some time out of your day-to-day -to, -day to join us. I realize that all of you out there are busy, you're juggling a number of different things, and the fact that you were able to carve out a little bit of time to spend it with us, we really appreciate that. Um, so I hope you found this informative, and if you consider this program further, I wish you good luck. Um, and good luck, frankly, in all that you do as you move forward. Uh, and it's been really nice to spend some time with everybody today. Uh, thank you so much, Eric. I can see responses coming in on chat here. Uh, so we'll be ending the session now. You can expect a post-webinar survey uh, on your email and where you can put down your full name for the webinar certificate. So thank you so much once again, folks, 
for joining the session. Uh, we do a lot of these, uh, you know, master classes, free master classes throughout the month. I've shared the link on the chat here in case you want to check out other webinars as well. And once again, like thanks, Eric, for uh, joining the session and taking the time also. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. We'll be ending the session now. Take care.